Welcome to the China Myth Podcast, a show about understanding today's China and how to work more constructively with your Chinese counterparts. It's brought to you by EME China Consultants and hosted by me, Gene Xu, author of the Chinese Honeymoon Period, everything we know about China, and the soon to be published after the Chinese honeymoon. Okay, so this is good. We're right at an hour, and I'm gonna start going over uh, the next section. Uh, the Chinese cultural concepts from the book, and this is, I think, uh, where hopefully we're going to have a lot more discussions about this. All right, so Angela, I'm going to share my screen again. Again, let me know if, for whatever reason, the PowerPoint is not advancing. Whether you read the book or you listen to the podcast, Angela, I don't know if you shared the podcast, but all of these chapters are also podcasts that you can listen to if you don't have the book and you don't like to read. But this is chapter one, and. Uh, chapter one basically describes that understanding the Chinese concept of guanxi is really understand how Chinese people operate. And the way that the book tells a very brief story, but what we really want to talk about is the practical definition of what guanxi actually is, because everybody that I've talked to has a different definition of guanxi. And so I'm going to give you what I think is a practical definition, but because we're giving this definition in English, I also want to illustrate how complicated translating what you read in English to Chinese is, and translating what you hear in Chinese back to English is, and actually reaching a common understanding. All right. So guanxi is the relationship between two people that represents their expectations. From each other, in terms of favoritism, referral for connections, and the sharing of inside information. All right, so there. This is an English practical definition of guanxi. So we need to try to understand what does it mean in Chinese. All right, so favoritism could be translated as pianxing. That means preferring. One person over another person, or it could just be translated as 好处 which means giving someone a benefit. Now, if you were to translate favoritism in the Chinese cultural context, you're probably more leaning towards 好处 not 偏心 What is the benefit of deepening our 关系 together? Referrals. So, what is the Chinese translation for referrals? It's 介绍 All right, and when we say referrals for connections, we're really talking about 介绍关系 Or you just may say 拉关系 And inside information. Okay, so inside information is 内部消息 Now, when you're talking with someone in China who you have a deep guanxi connection with, nobody is ever going to use the term "inside information." Nobody is ever going to use the term "nei bu xiao xi." Okay, they're basically just going to say something like, "Yao zhen me zuo." How are we going to accomplish this? Implying that it may require some inside information or "nei bu xiao xi." So, the One of the key things that's that as you know, as people who are learning Chinese and they're starting to communicate with their Chinese counterparts in Chinese, is to really understand that、uh, you don't want to you don't you you want to try to condition yourself not to talk about things in kind of a very literal sense, because that's not how the Chinese mind works. And When we talk about this whole concept of guanxi, the relationship between people that represents their expectations, expectation is also something that's very important to translate. Okay, and those of you who are actually learning Chinese, it can be 期望 it can be 期盼 or it can be 盼望 So this is an illustration of the complexities of trying to. Th- Think in English, translate into Chinese, and then speak in the Chinese because there are so many different ways to kind of say the same thing. And so this is actually all in the book. 
but I'm going to kind of read it and then I'm going to go deep into it and then I'll stop the share screen and then and then we'll talk a little bit more about this. So again, Guanxi is the relationship between two people that reflects their expectations of each other in terms of favoritism, referrals for connections, and the sharing of inside information. They say language is the gateway into another culture, but Guanxi is how you gain access to everything you desire in China. Now, one of the things what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pull out these key words because I'm saying them in English, but what does it actually mean in the Chinese cultural context of actually doing business with a person in China uh, or a Chinese person, all right? So access is basically what is the translation for China for that? In fact, why don't we, uh, why don't we workshop this? Uh, Angela, I can't see the screen, but I'm going to ask you this question. And then if anybody else wants to give an answer, they can give an answer. When I'm trying to explain that Guanxi is how you gain access to everything you desire in China, how would you translate access into Chinese? Yeah, no, that's, uh, so that's the more traditional, I guess, you know, the most, the more philosophical uh, view of trying to translate, you know, what we're what kind of what we're saying so so the again none of this when you translate things back and forth context is very important and there's never a single right or wrong answer of course i think grace gave all the answers what i basically said is what i basically said was basically the same as grace i just say mer okay mer is everything in china is kind of like do you have a door that you can open to access what you need so Homer is kind of implies something a little bit corrupt in, in a lot of Western minds. Uh, but the, the, the whole meaning of this point of this conversation is that it's very difficult to translate something and get the right meaning in the proper cultural context with the person on the other side, unless you really understand who they are and what you're talking about. And of course, the opposite of that is if you don't have access, it's just Maymer, all right? So, yeah, so this, uh, this conversation is excellent. Um, thank you, Todd, for, for sharing that. Thank you, Grace. You gave so many great answers that all of them would work. Again, this is all in the book. Guanxi is the level of relationship between two people that affects everything from trust to favoritism to referrals to get things done. It also affects the level of expectation between people, especially in terms of reciprocity and sharing of connections. So now what I want to do is I want to ask for the Chinese translation for expectation. All right. So Xi Wang, that's also what I would use. And, you know, if you think of Chinese people kind of have this, you know, yin yang. So there's always kind of like, what is the, what is the, you know, how do you find balance? And so you always talk about things in opposites and things in extremes. So, and the first one is mer or mei mer. Uh, as far as expectation, it's qi wang. And then this is an expectation. In my mind, the opposite of expectation is gu fu, which means you, you, you disappoint somebody. You de zui yi ren, and you fail to meet up, live up to their expectations. And when you do that, Obviously, it destroys the guanxi because the overarching thing that we're all talking about here in chapter one is what is guanxi? How do I deepen it? And what does it mean when I achieve it? And how do I maintain it? All right. So when I try to explain guanxi to most non-Chinese people, I say it's kind of it's simple to interpret. It's difficult to comprehend, and it's impossibly complex to manage for most, as understanding it begins with the Chinese consideration of li yi, and that's chapter two, which we'll also talk about. And Guanxi deepens with the Chinese culture of giving face, or ge mianzi. All right, so Li Yi is chapter two, which we're going to go over. 
and que means is chapter five. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to talk about all of the elements that will help you better understand holistically why Guanxi is important when you're doing business in China, and how do you lose it, how do you gain it, how do you develop it, and how you maintain it. Now、uh, we're not going to do this because we're, we're we're having a lot of great discussions, so we don't need to do this. But these are basically kind of like the questions at the end of this chapter because I introduce、uh, some people that I deal with, Richard, Vincent, and what these questions serve to do is to help you、uh, activate your imagination, and you want to activate your imagination to start to. Be empathetic, and I call these empathy exercises to what your counterparts in China actually think, actually value.、Uh, why do they behave the way they do? Why do they say the things they say? And what it actually means,、uh, and how you can control your emotions when they say something or do something that would otherwise make you very, very frustrated or unhappy. So、uh, I'm gonna stop the share screen real quick before I go into chapter two and just. Open the floor up for questions or discussions or comments about the Chinese cultural concept of guanxi. Follow me for more insights about yourself in relation to your Chinese counterparts. And remember, a cultural dichotomy is just a contrast that lacks curiosity.